Hello everyone, my name is Sangeeta and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, this channel is all about art. Uh, in my previous videos, I have recorded some of my works and then uploaded them. Uh, going forward, I will be doing more of that and also sharing uh, and I will, I will also be sharing the learnings that I, uh, you know, uh, make with my exploration in art. Uh, so for today's video, I uh, want to uh, introduce you guys to digital paintings. I got a few requests from some people who have no idea how, about how to proceed with digital painting. So I will be introducing you to a particular tool that I use uh, both for paintings as well as um, making my own original comics. Uh, okay, right now. Uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So uh, yeah, so in your screen you can see uh, GIMP. This is a free and open source image editor as you can see it from here. So this is like completely free for you to download and use. Uh, so yeah, so just come back to GIMP.org and uh, click download. So yeah, so here you will see uh, the current stable version that is available here. And uh, you will also see that uh, this uh, software is available for different OSs. So uh, download the one as per your uh, system requirements and install it. Uh, since I'm already using this uh, uh, software, I won't show you the process of doing that. Uh, so uh, let's get directly into the tool. So once you have installed GIMP and uh, when you run it, this is the interface that uh, you are greeted with. Um, so this may look complex for someone who is just a beginner with uh, digital painting or uh, maybe just a very beginner with any kind of tools, uh, uh, you know, they, they are just trying out. Um, so I would suggest not to get, uh, you know, too, too much occupied on the complexity of the tool and all the options that are available that, that you can see over here. But uh, just to focus on the certain aspects that, uh, you know, would be required for you to um, be able to create digital paintings and uh, uh, other different kind of creatives that you uh, want to produce. So yeah, so in this uh, so in this section, I would be focusing mostly on those aspects. I won't go through uh, you know the multiple options that are present e in each and every menu that is over here, and uh, I'll just uh, walk you through the uh, very basics that are required for you to make a digital painting. Um, and another thing, uh, one like you can see whenever I am like hovering over one of the menus over there, you are not able to see the sub menus. So that is because of a uh, uh, recording conflict uh, that is in my system. So in order to make you understand, I have taken some screenshots of the sub menus that are available. So uh, what I'll do, I'll first uh, import them and then I will uh, walk you through the process of creating a digital painting. So now you can see that I have uh, imported some uh, images or opened some images in, in this uh, uh, onto Kim. Um, so uh, this is the screen that you are like usually usually created uh, with, and I have imported that as well. Um, so let me just get uh, straight into it and create a file, and uh, uh, then I will walk you through the options that are available to you once you are creating it. So yeah, you suddenly see that you have a black uh, screen present over here, and also if you follow the cursor it uh, says here background um, so what happened uh, you know while when i created the, this file so when you go to file uh, you will uh, see that uh, there is a sub menu and once you click uh, new uh, you get to see this so uh, i have taken a screenshot of the uh, you know the dialog that appears once you click new um, let me just uh, zoom it uh, for you for a better visibility. Yeah, th this should be fine. So yeah, so when whenever you're creating any new file, uh, uh, these this is something that you'll have to uh, you know uh, set uh, because since this is a digital painting, uh, there is going to be some uh, you know size attached to that image, uh, which will be determined by how big or small. Uh, uh, the image you are creating 
so uh, you can see that the width and height you, you can specify it and also the unit uh, you are comfortable with so i i generally recommend to go by pixels because uh, we are mostly comfortable with that like any pictures that we are even taking with our phones uh, we get to see okay this uh, you know, image is like this width by this height in pixels so this uh, so pixels is like a really comfortable unit to go ahead with uh, but uh, you can also experiment and check with inches and millimeters and other uh, elements that are here and see uh, how the size of the image turns out and all that uh, so yeah so i just went ahead with the default uh, numbers that are here and uh, the selected pixels and uh, hence my this image was created um, the other thing with uh, the setting is that like uh, let's assume that you are making something only for instagram or if instagram is like your primary blogging model for uh, your creatives um, for try to make uh, make uh, the image a square so uh, pay attention that you are keeping the width and the height of uh, you know of your image uh, the same um, so yeah so now now we will work on this canvas so uh, as i pointed out earlier like whenever you are making a new file uh, your image size will be created and then you will see that there is a you know a background uh, thing uh, written over here so this is a very important section uh, uh, and uh, I will be talking about it, uh, you know, uh, after some time. Uh, but let's get on to the actual painting part. So, since for me this canvas is like uh, black, uh, you can always change it. Um, so for that, you can go to uh, follow this uh, cursor, and you can always go to this uh, uh, tool, which is the bucket fill tool. Uh, then come back here where you can see the two different colors, black and white. Uh, and uh, do the color selection from there so if you want to keep your canvas white you can keep it white or if you, you can keep it any color any color that you want so to change the color uh, you can click onto that white section and uh, a, a dialog box will appear which looks like this so uh, here you can see uh, that uh, you are presented with the rgb formats and uh, you are also uh, you know given uh, an html notation so um, you if you are comfortable using hex codes uh, you can also you know um, input that and just select the color or uh, this bar of colors is available to you you can just click it and uh, select so what i have done for this uh, uh, canvas is to select a white uh, background so just select the color come back uh, with this uh, paint uh, bucket fill tool selected and just click anywhere and uh, then your uh, you know canvas color changes um, now uh, comes the other uh, important part which is the tool that you are using to draw or paint so just like when you are creating something uh, in your uh, uh, in a normal traditional media uh, the same principle applies over here so uh, this toolbox section is uh, something that you should be exploring you know eventually but right now uh, you can if you follow the cursor this is the pencil tool that i have selected and this is the paintbrush tool so i will show you the paintbrush tool and uh, one more thing is that uh, the, the when i'm hovering the name of the tool is not visible so i'll just show you how that looks like uh, so yeah, so th this is a screenshot that I took for uh, you know hovering over the paintbrush tool. So when you are doing the same over uh, any of these icons here, it will tell you what tool that is. So I'll go ahead and select the paintbrush tool, and similarly the way uh, I changed color for the canvas, I'll just uh, change it and maybe uh, take something like a deep maroon or so uh, so you you can notice like whatever the color that i am picking uh, it's changing in, in in this section so yeah i'll just select that come back here and uh, the other important thing that you need to notice is that whenever i'm selecting this uh, paintbrush tool this is the section where you can change uh, the settings of the brush so uh, do not think much about what the aspect ratio is angle spacing hardness and all of that stuff um, the most intuitive part is the size with where you can you know just uh, depending on the brush that you have selected you can just uh, experiment uh, and see so like if you can notice like the hardness is like uh, really less if i increase it what happens like let's let's make it 100 
so you can see the brush is more prominent and less blurry uh, so what are the brushes that are available to us so again like uh, if you follow the cursor over here if you click that section uh, you are presented with multiple types of brushes so I i'll show you how that looks like so this is how that uh, let me just uh, reduce the size so this is how the um, default brushes are here so you can just select any of these brushes and uh, just play uh, play along and uh, create different kinds of templates and all of that and just see like what kind of brushes are available and what is the effect they produce on uh, onto your painting uh, experiment with the size and the force and hardness so uh, some things like force and hardness are intuitive to how uh, we use a brush uh, when we are uh, uh, making something on a traditional media so it is similar to that so yeah coming back to uh, you know this section uh, so that's pretty much about brushes that you need to understand and uh, you know just experiment and the other uh, super important thing that you must must uh, uh, learn and uh, keep it in mind is the concept of layers so whenever we are making any kind of painting uh, in any media let it be acrylics or watercolors we do not make it in one go like it never gets uh, done in one go there are always layers involved you make the background and then you put on lighter colors and then colors on the top of that so the same principle of layers uh, is also used um, uh, here and not only just gimp like if you are using any other kind of tools like photoshop or illustrator you will be presented with the layers concept so this is something that you should familiarize yourself with and uh, the important part and uh, the important part of this is that uh, it makes your uh, overall drawing like really simple uh, and uh, it's just a good idea to work in multiple layers uh, and uh, you know just uh, uh, focus on one thing at a time and uh, and if you're not satisfied with something just delete the layer and create something on the top of it and just see how the whole effect looks like so for that uh, you know the layers options are also available to you for which you can come to layer and select a uh, new layer which will look like uh, this uh, yeah so this is how uh, the dialog box appears when you are creating a new layer so let me just uh, zoom it uh, a little bit so yeah um, you can choose to write a layer name and I would suggest you to do that because uh, then it uh, you know it becomes easier for you to recognize uh, uh, which layer you are working on and because there will be more so whenever you are creating new layer all these layers will be added up here um, and stacked so it just gives you a better uh, idea when you name a layer and uh, experiment with this like you can increase or decrease the capac capacity uh, play around with the height and width uh, and you know just select it um, so let me just uh, you know do that exercise so uh, another thing is that like if you realize if you if you noticed i switched from this image to this image and this is important when you have multiple images open because uh, wherever you are uh, wherever you are currently working in your window frame uh, and creating a layer it will be created in that particular place so ensure that you create layers where uh, on the image you intend to uh, manipulate so yeah uh, I'll just go ahead and create a new layer here and I'll call it layer 2 and I'll press ok so you now you can see that you know this second layer is uh, created over here um, so yeah so uh, other thing uh, with the layers is like that uh, uh, you can choose to work on one particular layer at a time so and uh, let's say uh, you just uh, let's say we have another layer here so I'll just uh, create a new layer and I will call it layer 3 and uh, yeah so you saw that I, I just created another layer on the top of that so here uh, my selected layer is la la layer 3 if I come down and you know uh, click on layer 2 that becomes my selected layer so this becomes very very important when you are making a painting and you are making a painting in multiple layers so pay attention to which layer is selected and to which layer you are applying changes to to 
make this process more simpler and less distractive like let's assume that you don't want to see whatever the work we have done in layer 2 and just want to work on layer 3 so this is the option that you can uh, use to you know toggle between uh, making it visible and non-visible so let's say you want to uh, make the layer layer to invisible you can just click that um, okay so all these changes were done in the background uh, so if i just toggle that uh, everything goes um, but uh, okay okay let's make uh, something in layer 2 um, i'll change the color to something in blue and uh, yeah uh, let's just make it for a, a demo purpose increase the size of the brush uh, yeah so this is how now working in second layer now let's say i want to work in third layer independently and uh, don't want to get distracted by layer 2 so i will uh, hide layer 2 so now you can see that we had created these blue prints in layer 2 and once you hide it uh, you and you are there in layer 3 you can just uh, you know uh, make uh, something over there so let's make something over here I'll, I'll select any uh, other color uh, let's say uh, yellow and uh, same size of image and with now the layer 3 is selected and it is visible I'll just uh, go ahead and click in random places uh, and now if I make layer 2 visible as well so you can see um, so the way you have stacked your layers will also uh, impact a lot when you are creating uh, uh, something uh, you know over here so let's uh, uh, if you can drag and drop and you know just put the layer 3 below uh, uh, layer 2 so now layer 2 becomes more prominent and all of that so experiment with all of this like uh, these all we play a role and uh, as and when you uh, you know practice more with it uh, uh, you get used to like the different kinds of options that are available if you also uh, see like it says opacity and uh, the mode which is normal and all of that so there are different kinds of options that are available but not to worry on that front uh, simply just uh, you know select a particular brush select colors and uh, implement the same principles that you are uh, that you do when you create a painting in traditional media so now let's assume that this you know painting is done and you want to save it the other uh, thing that distinguishes uh, these kind of tools from other tools from uh, you know the normal paint that we have all used is uh, the concept of concept of export so uh, go to file and uh, uh, I know this uh, sub menu is not available to you, but you will see uh, a, a section that is called export. Uh, you can go to export and uh, there uh, you will have the option to export it in a particular uh, uh, format. So you can export it as PNG, you can export it as JPG uh, and all of that. So uh, or you can just go to export as and you know just do that. So instead of like save which will save the file in a GIMP uh, format uh, you need to export your files uh, uh, to PNG or JPG uh, uh, whatever uh, you want to work with I, I generally store the uh, finished product in uh, JPEGs uh, yeah so that pretty much covers all the everything that you need to know for uh, you know a digital painting so if you just practice this uh, you will anyway go grow comfortable using the different kinds of tools that are available so this is like the tech text tool that uh, you can experiment then there are pencils here you can experiment and uh, you know the different uh, sizes that you can create and all of that uh, so yeah so just uh, you know experiment with this tool and uh, have fun and create something um, the other uh, important part of uh, this uh, digital painting is like uh, what peripherals and accessories are actually required for you to create a digital painting so right now i have just randomly selected a brush and i'm, I'm you know uh, uh, clicking it in portions where it is coloring but that's not how uh, uh, digital painting is usually done you would require a graphic tablet um, so the details of that graphic tablet is something that i will cover in the uh, in the next video so um, download GIMP, uh, make a lot of paintings and uh, just, just have fun. Um, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.